Hi, neighbor. How are we today? Hope you're doing well. I'm fine. Things are going fine here. It's a little warm, but I'm in the shade. Anyway, that's... <laughs> That's my attempt to be like Mr. Rogers. I don't know if you have ever seen Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood or perhaps the Tom Hanks film uh, portraying Fred Rogers, but uh, Mr. Rogers became uh, very famous for being uh, a very friendly, very calming uh, TV icon for children and, and some grown-ups as well. Uh, who helped children sort of talk about their feelings and uh, and talk about the world. Um, we're talking about Rogerian arguments today and a Rogerian argument is not named after Mr. Rogers of Mr. Rogers neighborhood. It's actually named after Carl Rogers who was uh, among other things a psychotherapist who developed a lot of strategies so that two opposing sides could hopefully come to uh, at least, uh, if not a compromise or, an, or a mutual agreement, they would at least come to respect uh, both points of view. But Mr. Rogers of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood is a good way of thinking about this type of argument because in comparison to the classical style argument that I talked about last time, in which the goal is to win, to win your argument, to be confident and to know that, that you are right and the other side is wrong, the Rogerian argument is a friendly argument in that it is seeking a mutually beneficial outcome. So let's get to how to write a Rogerian argument. So the first thing I'd like you to think about is your audience. If you are writing a Rogerian style argument, who is the best person to read this? Well, with the classical style argument, I recommended that writers uh, approach that type of essay by thinking of their ideal audience as a fence sitter, someone who has not made up his or her mind on the subject. I think an ideal audience for a Rogerian argument are people that are on the extreme side of an issue. And that's not an easy audience to write for. If you imagine that you are writing an argument knowing that there are two diametrically opposed sides on the issue, and maybe these two sides hate each other, but there are two, at least two, very distinct sides of this issue. You want to simplify things, think of political issues where we can describe a, uh, a side that's on the far left and the far right. So that's, that's, there's a lot of issues, right? Gun control, abortion, you know, whatever. There you can, those two diametrically opposed sides. I, I don't want to talk any, about anything terribly political that will, will make you feel uncomfortable if you're watching this video and you're on a side. So I will stick with something that, um, it's still political. What's not political? But it's uh, maybe not as caustic as other uh, uh, other situations. And I also have an essay for you to read on it. So let's take the topic of homeschooling. So the idea of homeschooling, of having parents be in charge of the education of the, their children, that's a topic that many people uh, many people are on the side of like, yes, homeschooling is the best. People should just forget public school and even forget private school and homeschooling is the best way to educate your child and develop the child's morality and and artistic skills and whatever, right? Uh, homeschooling's on one side, that side is the best, right? So people, people imagine people over on that side. And then you have other people uh, on the other side that saying like, wow, homeschooling. Homeschooling makes weirdos. Look at those weird homeschoolers over there. And that's, I would not want my parents homeschooling me. And so I don't think anybody uh, should, should be homeschooled by their parents because homeschooling can produce, you know, wrong minded, minded uh, ideas and homeschooling has no standards and, and we should have standards. So there's the, there's the side that's very much in favor, not just in favor of public schooling, but uh, anti homeschooling. So you've got these, these two sides. So a Rogerian argument is ideally going to be presenting ideas that will 
mutually understand both of these sides and respect both of these sides, but the argument or the main point of the Rogerian essay is to somehow bring these two sides closer together. Now with viewpoints on the extreme side of things, you're probably not going to make them say like, yeah, we now we like each other and yay, high five to the opposing sides and let's be friends, right? That's probably not going to happen. But, uh, but again, if you are writing, keep it in mind that you want to write something and you want to seek a compromise. And maybe in this case, the compromise is going to be like, yeah, you know, uh, uh, this side, even though they're very in favor of homeschooling, maybe they can agree that homeschooling is not ideal for everyone and there's no reason to push homeschooling on everybody else. And maybe for the public school side of things, uh, the argument can be made that, yeah, you know, public schooling's great, but there's nothing wrong with having more options and we can show examples of where homeschooling in certain situations, maybe many situations, can be beneficial for the child and therefore beneficial for society in general. So a kind of live and let live type of argumentation. Uh, there are some states uh, that are very much against homeschooling and so those homeschooling families, uh, you know, they have a hard time in those states. So that type of Rogerian argument could be saying, hey, homeschoolers, some of your stuff is great, but it's not all great. We know there's problems, maybe there's safety issues, or maybe there's standard issues, but public school, hey, don't be so anti-homeschool. There's a lot of good things about it. Why don't we, why don't we take a, a couple of baby steps so that we can have a little more freedom, a little more flexibility, compromise, give up a little bit on each side. So that's one way we can think of a Rogerian argument as it's seeking some type of compromise and explaining, not just compromise for the sake of compromise, but explaining why that compromise will make things better for society or for our community or for whatever, whatever we're arguing about, the world maybe, uh, but that compromise will, will improve things. It will alleviate current problems. So it's, it's in theory, it's win-win even though both sides might be giving things up. Now on rare occasions, you might come up with a Rogerian argument where there's, there's, two, diametrically, there's two diametrically opposed sides uh, that are against each other and maybe you come up with a path that's like, hey, this, this is a, a, a new way of looking at things and a new pathway and, and both sides don't need to compromise or give up anything. Here's, here's a new path that's gonna fix everything. I can't right now come up with an idea for something like that, but, uh, but if you are a genius and you can come up with a pathway that makes both of the extreme sides incredibly happy and agree with each other, then go, then go for it. That's the exciting thing about the Rogerian argument is that it's this idea of like, well, let's not, let's not just draw a line in the sand and say that this is the side is good and that side's evil. It's basically saying, hey, there's positive things about both sides. What, what can we do to, to make this community better? Uh, by working together. There's not necessarily a formalized structure or a formalized outline for a Rogerian argument, so there's a lot of different ways that uh, you can organize this type of essay. However, I will say that some components or ingredients that should be in the essay are an introduction that lets us know uh, what's, what's going on in this essay, what we're setting out to prove, what the topic is. Also, it sets the tone, and that again, the tone should be respectful, right? Mutually respectful. Rogerian arguments are not angry arguments, unless it's just angry that both sides can't get along, right? Rogerian arguments are about creating mutual respect. That way, when someone who's over on this side of the issue, when they read your essay, they'll say, oh, yes, you're right, That's, you, you are correct, that's why I feel this way about this subject. You, you understand my point of view. And somebody over on this side of the issue, they'll read the same essay and they'll say, yeah, you, you, understand, you understand my point of view. Uh, so that creation of understanding, that should be an ingredient that's in your Rogerian argument. So you want to spend a certain amount of time explaining the, the different positions, right? The, you want to explain the different views and you want to do so fairly and you want to do so in a respectful way so that if somebody on that side was reading your essay, they would feel like, oh yes, you, you have correctly portrayed why I feel that way. The trick of the Rogerian argument is that if you just present both sides fairly and you end the essay, then you, you haven't argued anything. So the, the real key ingredient for the Rogerian argument 
is that you are proposing some type of solution or some type of compromise. And so that's the key to the argument aspect of this Rogerian essay, is that you've got to convince these opposing sides that it's beneficial if they seek some type of compromise or if they take steps towards moderation or agreeing with each other or you know whatever the issue might be. So again, basic structure ideas. If you spend the first half of the essay explaining and clarifying and respectfully, you know, admiring and critiquing, right? There can be some criticism as well, as long as it's polite. Uh, if you so if you explain and critique uh, the different sides of these viewpoints of this issue, uh, that might be maybe 50% of the argument, 50% of the essay. And if you spend the second half um, explaining your solution or the proposal or the compromise and the steps, maybe a little bit of process analysis, right? Step-by-step -step instruction and advice, that will come into play as well. A lot of times if we're proposing a change uh, for our community or society, it's great to look at what are other communities, what are other countries doing, and maybe we can take some of those strategies and apply it to this situation. So 50% explaining, oh, here's what these two sides mean, here's what they stand for, here's a fair presentation, and 50% of, okay, let's compromise, let's, let's have a call to action, let's provide the steps to making things better. All right, so uh, that is the Rogerian argument in a nutshell. And if you want to see a nice example of a Rogerian argument, I am including a link to one down below. So read that essay about homeschooling. You'll notice that it's written in APA format. And in my class, we use the MLA standard. So don't worry about the, the format of it yet. We'll be talking about MLA in another video. If you've got any questions for me about Rogerian arguments, please leave a comment or maybe you have some of your own suggestions as to what might make a great topic for a Rogerian argument. Uh, one thing that comes to my mind is like veganism on one side and carnivores on the other, right? So what topics do you think would be good to, to have sort of this middle point of view that's seeking compromise? So leave a comment or a question if you like, and also think about what we've talked about so far. We've now looked at classical arguments and Rogerian arguments. What type of argument do you want to write? Classical or Rogerian? Something to think about, and we will talk again soon. Take care.